Hello and welcome back to the tutorial of how to make WebSockets from scratch using Node.js with no external dependencies. Hopefully with Hashem's help, this tutorial will show you how to open the initial WebSocket connection using Node.js. Since we did the introduction in the previous tutorial, let's get right into it. Essentially, what's required is found in the official documentation, which is publicly available, called RFC 6455, the WebSocket protocol. The steps are, first, so when we make a, a response for when the WebSocket first connects to us, the response contains a status line, an HTTP status line with a 101 code as a response. Then we need to add an upgrade header with the value WebSocket. Then we need to add a, a header with, the val with a key connection and the value upgrade. Simple enough. And now this third, this fourth step is actually the most complicated step. But once we get past it, then we have the connection open. The, the, the fourth header is called sec-websocket-accept. And the value of this is based on another header that's passed from the request, which as mentioned before, is called the following. When a request, when a WebSocket sends a request, they they send this header called sec WebSocket key, which is a string. So the response needs to take that key and do things to it. The value of this header is constructed by concatenating the key, meaning that key value that's sent from the client, to this other predefined string that they have in their documentation, which you just have to copy. They just, some guys just decided to have this for some reason. It could be anything. And then to do that, there's a certain method called SHA1 hashing, which we don't even really need to know what it does because there's a built-in dependency in Node.js, which does it for us. And then we make that into base64 encoding, which is done pretty easily in, in Node.js. And that is essentially everything that needs to be done to set the initial connection. So let's get right to it. So here's where we left off in the previous tutorial, where you were just about to do the, the so we were just about to send the response. So this argument actually is two, this, this callback has two arguments. So essentially this general callback that's called after listen is, is called one time after the server is started. But then when we say server.onUpgrade, meaning when we have an upgrade header that's sent from the request, this callback is called every time there's a request. So actually, I found out after that the first argument is the request, which is essentially the same as this request, kind of. So in the request, we, have, we can read the headers of the request, which is useful for getting the key that we need, for example. So let's just do that right now. One way is just testing if it's really a WebSocket connecting, but we could just skip that for simplicity. So, for example, we need to get the key, which is the key that's sent by the client. So var key, or whatever, equals request.headers. I'm just going to close this. Request.headers at index is called sec-websocket-key. Key, singular. As you can see here, this is what's sent by the client. Sec WebSocket key, it's something. We need to take that. And if we don't have that, let's just return, which will just cause us to the connection to fail. We could also do other things. So if we don't have it, then we could return. We could also send a bad request response, but for now, just for simplicity, let's just return. Now we need to we need to do the instructions that's said in the documentation. Which, again, we take that string, just review it one more time, we take this string that we had, that's taken from the WebSocket web, web key, and then we have to, we have to add, we have to add it to this string. So, in the documentation, you can just find this, this public documentation, just copy this string, and let's copy it. So, for example, we have to add it, so var added equals... Um, we do the the key first plus this thing plus this string 
Oh, different Wazoo line. Make sure it's the same line. Let me just actually double check that. Yes, the key first. So we did, we, did, we uh, the added string is first the key results plus this string. And then we need to hash it using, as it says, SHA1 hashing, which is a very complicated way of encoding it. But it's already done in Node.js. So all we need to do is use the crypto dependency, which is already included in Node.js. So it's still considered without any external dependencies. For crypto equals require crypto, meaning crypto meaning like encryption, etc. So this generates what's called a hash, so to speak, which is essentially an encoded string based on this string. But it's not really a string. It's a hash object, which needs to be converted to a string in base64 afterwards but that's one thing so first of all let's just get it var hash equals crypto dot i think hash very simple dot hash and then the hash is this string right here so this generates what's called a hash which is an object but it's really a string or really a binary string but we don't really need to know what it is we all we need to do is we need to convert it to a base64 string so to do that, we need to get the binary value of this. So this, this hash is an object, a JavaScript object. And then we need to get the binary value of that. So to do that, we do dot digest. And in order to convert it to base64 in, in, to base 64 string, we just, in the digest parameter, we just say base64. Very simple. And we could have checked this. We could do checking. But for now, this should work. Now we need to actually make the response which we have to make our own headers so our response headers equals we have to manually make the headers for example so it says let's look at the documentation again the first header is a status line which is an http status line response with a code 101 and then it explains what it is here but essentially this is what it is so for example http slash 1.1 which is generally http response and then the status code is 101 and afterwards, you can put anything you want, like a message. That's the first header. And then it doesn't really matter the order as long as we have the other headers. This doesn't order doesn't really matter. So after that, we have to have an up, a header that has the key upgrade with the value WebSocket. So to do that, we just say upgrade WebSocket. Simple enough. And the other header needs to have a connection with a key, and the value is upgrade. So connection, upgrade. And then the last header is this thing that we've been doing, the sec WebSocket accept, which this is the main thing that actually makes it happen with the value that we generated. So very simple. So sec WebSocket accept, and then we just add the thing that was added earlier. No, no, we have to add... The hash, it's not really a hash, it's really a base64 string. You could call it anything, but that's, we have to add this, which is the base64 version of the hash. Oh, no, no, we have to, one more step. No, no, this is not, this is not correct. Good thing you remembered. The hash, we have, we have to do create hash dot update. That's it, I messed up. It's okay, people make mistakes. So instead of this, we'll do this, say this in a second. So instead of hash, you have to do dot create hash because it's in the format of sh1, sha1. Just to double check. Yeah. So create hash, sha1, and then just dot updates. And then, then that, that should do it. That should be, that should give us the string that we need. And then we just add that to our headers. And now we need to just, we need to write these headers to our sockets, which is why we have the socket. So to do that, we have to combine the headers into a valid HTTP string by adding the new lines between each one. So socket.write, and then we do our response headers dot join, because we join these into one string. And then I think we have to do slash r which is like a um a new line with a one kind of a certain certain kind of new line and then slash n after that and then i think afterwards we have to add two new lines for it to work i could double check this but if you have to add two new lines in the same way 
slash r, backslash r backslash n and then backslash r backslash n. I think that automatically tells it to end. Let me just triple check if that's correct. I'm almost certain that's the way to do it, but just yeah, we have to join it, then we have to add those two new lines. And now let's just test it because it should work hypothetically. So to So, this is the other server that was open from the, from the example. So, let's see if this actually works. Working is good. Node dot... Okay, since I called it Node.js, whatever, it's kind of complicated. So, since they have the same port as before, let's see if this same command that we wrote earlier works. It worked. Opened. The connection is officially open, and now we're ready to start sending and receiving data, which, with the chef's help, can be done in the next tutorial.